Daniel, what did you do with the map? Mm, what do you mean? You know what I mean. Where's the map that was with my stuff? I don't know. I'm not keeping track of your things. Feels like they're having some tension. Welcome back to Life is Strange 2. Last time we started to play <laughs> and the game was like, yay, you should play Captain Spirit. Like that's, it fits nicely into the story right here. And we did that. So now we're actually getting back to playing Life is Strange 2 and continuing with Sean and Daniel. Once upon a time in a wild, wild world, there were two wolf brothers living in their home there with their papa wolf. They all lived happily together, but one day, hunters took their dad away forever. So now the brothers were alone and they had to find a new home. They started a journey through the great big forest. The wolf brothers wandered for days and nights learning how to live on their own for the first time. They slept in the backwoods among creepy creatures and barely ate anything. They eventually found a peaceful orchard <laughs> and were able to eat and pee. But they didn't know. Hunters tried to tie them up, but the wolf brothers managed to escape with the help of a friendly bear. No. He showed them how to survive. And help them find a warm camp for the night. That's when the big brother discovered that the little one was not an ordinary wolf, but a super wolf. That's how they found themselves even further, headed to the faraway land of their pop, where they hope to find peace. That's so sad story-based game that highlights player choice your actions and decisions will have consequences that impact the world around you and your brother choose wisely and the game impacted my save file of the awesome adventures of captain spirit can't tell if that's good or bad to our grandparents december 1st oh it's been like a month a month has passed I hope they have winter clothes. I only left them like 30 bucks. <laughs> Puppy. Is it mushroom? Mushrooms? Oh wow, they're like full on hunting. with this one that one's too easy look don't brag it was too heavy for you a few days ago be practicing psychic powers I don't know how I feel about this let's try to lift something else not too heavy, though. I'm a little tired. Mm. Oh, mushroom. I'm so glad Daniel took this little girl with us. Okay, so... Oh, that's not what I wanted. Ask to live... Oh, you can lift it, puppy! You could... Try and lift mushroom? What? Are you stupid? You want to hurt her. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Let's leave the puppy out of this. Well, that rock is probably too big. Sometimes he looks so scared of himself. I mean, this would we be a scary thing. Through. Welcome to Telekinesis 101. <laughs> Please don't kill your teacher. Can you imagine, first off, this happening 
Also, I think a lot of us have probably imagined it. We have comic books and movies and TV shows that have someone who has, like, some kind of special ability. So a lot of us have probably played with this idea. We actually just saw in Captain Spirit a kid who did play with this idea, who just, like, loved it. We've grown up with this idea of, of superheroes and superpowers, so a lot of us have probably pictured this idea for a very long time. But how it works in reality often isn't how it works in TV shows, movies, whatever. I say that as though it happens in reality. I realize that. But we have these, these, these mental images, these constructs of how we picture ourselves and other people, right? And to have that suddenly be so dramatically changed. So for Daniel, like how he pictures himself and who he, his, his identity of him as a person and what he like can or can't do or, or all of those other things, dreams, aspirations in the future, even all of that has been like drastically changed overnight, not only by figuring out what happened with his dad, right? He saw something on the news and suddenly everything changed. The closest kind of analogy I can think of that a lot of us may be able to relate to is 9-11 in the sense that like, again, overnight or over the period of a day, how we we thought of the country potentially or security or privacy or safety, all of that stuff changed, right? Um, that or like, you know, when we've had a sudden death in the family, like very similar concepts. But for this character, it wasn't just that it wasn't just losing a parent, which is already traumatic enough by itself. It was also the fact that his brother knew and didn't tell him that can also be an additional, an additional level of trauma on this lovely trauma sandwich that we're making here. But then it's also like how he sees himself, which is already an aspect of loss. When it comes to loss, it's not just the loss that is impactful, which is how we usually think of it. But it's also Again, we have dreams, aspirations, all those other things. And we think of those people in it. So, like, when Daniel thought of the future, he probably imagined his dad being a part of that. Well, suddenly that's gone. So, like, the entire future has changed. That's an aspect of this, too. So, that's a part of this. But now it's not just that. Because it's not just that his dad is gone and that lost. It's not just how he pictured his future that's gone. It's literally himself and his own identity that has suddenly changed because of this power. So, that's a part of that for Daniel. But, but now we have Sean. How does he see his brother now? Sean has had a little bit more time to process what's happened with the dad. Whether he has or not, I don't know. I don't think he has because he's just kind of, he's kind of told himself I can't because I have to be there for my brother. But now there's this idea of like, I'm seeing my brother differently. There's so many like very complicated aspects to what is happening. And he's kind of making light of it by saying like, don't kill your teacher, right? Well, first off, how can you have a telekinesis 101 class? You can't, right? That's part of the joke. But, I mean, that implies that, like, there would be an accident or something like that would happen that would hurt him. And I don't know that, that there would be, at least on purpose, from his brother. Oh, I need to click on Welcome to telekinesis 101. Please don't kill your teacher. What about this rock? How about trying out that rock over there? Just one more time. No, it's too far. I didn't know that. Stop trying to make fun of me. That implies that that was purposeful. Just... I'm, and I'm sorry. One more time. I do want to say something doesn't have to be purposeful to, like, have that feeling of making fun of someone. I want to recognize that. I didn't know that, though. Sean, as the character, may have known that, like, distance was an aspect to this. Me, as the player, did not know that. I was not trying to make fun of this character by any means. I'm sorry. Aww, I'm so close. I can feel it. It also feels like feeling frustrated means that it's super easy for what I'm suggesting to Daniel to be taken the wrong way. So at this point, at this point, if I suggest just the right thing, that may be enough to help Daniel feel not frustrated. But anything other than that right thing is kind of like adding to that frustration. Not your usual shooting rage, right? So what about this? How about those cans? Can you fly them all together without dropping any? Sure, look. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. You're getting way better at this. 
Okay. Let's show Daniel some more stuff to play with before we call it a day. Dude, it's getting late and cold. Let's get done with this practice session. Oh, okay, so I can't leave this area. I mean, I can ask him to do this rock, but there was the implication that the rock was too big. I don't think this will go well. How about that one? I can do it with the small rocks, but not the big ones. You can do this. Trust me. Just relax. Focus. <sighs> I'll try. Okay. He was open to that. I would call that lifting a rock. I would call that success. Whoa. Holy shit. I did it. <laughs> like a boss. You're getting good at you this. You see that mushroom? That was the biggest rock ever. Oh, the poopy. Come on, dude. That's just the start. Let's try something else. Cool. You're like Coach Aaron. You're my power coach. <laughs> a snowball fight? Not yet. This is a new exercise, young apprentice. See if you can stop this in the air. Young Padawan. <laughs> cool. Okay. But you better not hit me. Like that time you gave me a bruise? What? Serious. You won't let me. Right? Try it. Okay, so this is like a different type of challenge. So not the face. Let's not go for the face. How to adjust your throwing strength. Oh. So we can like have it more have it create more of an arc to have like less strength behind it. <gasps> Sean! You suck! I said don't hit me, jerk! Oh! Sorry! sorry. I, I thought you would stop it. Serious. So, like, off to the side. I thought the whole point was to hit him so he would stop it. Aw, oh, that sucked. No, that was awesome! One more. I thought that was awesome. Oh. Ready? You can hit the puppy? Why would you do that? What I can do, Sean. Look I knew that you could. I've taught you well. But you, you're a master student. <coughs> hey, that still sounds nasty. <coughs> you're not getting better. I t First off, I remember commenting on like the cough, sneeze, whatever, like way back when, when we first started like this this camping adventure, if you want to call it that. You're not allowed to cough and, like, get sick while we're playing boxcar children. There is also, like, that kind of trope of, like, you use powers and then you get, like, a nosebleed or something like that. So is that kind of what they're leaning into? This idea that, like, if the brother uses the power, he's getting a cough. Or is this, like, a regular cough and we don't have access to medical care? So, like, bronchitis, pneumonia, those kinds of things. Told you. I'm fine. Just a little beat. Well, you need to rest now, superhero. Because, like, even if he has telekinesis. Can we go back now? Yeah. Let's just fill up the canteens before we head back. Telekinesis doesn't make you immune to, like, the body's physical... That cough has been going on for days, Daniel. Months! I really this... don't like that. Months. I told you. This has been months! Been We've just been outside for a while. Daniel, I have the game paused. You're not allowed to talk when the game is paused. <laughs> um, but, like, even with telekinesis, you're not immune to, like, the body's stuff, right? We're not literally talking about a Superman here. So, he could have, like, bronchitis, pneumonia, all those other things, and still have telekinesis. Game rules say you're not allowed to talk while the game is paused. This video game rules, buddy. 
I was going to say, I don't intrude on your inner monologue, so you can't intrude on mine. But that is very much what I do. I very much intrude on this character's inner monologue. So, really don't have space to say that, do I? Is there canteens beer bottles? Oh, no, they're actual canteens. Here we go. Like hydro flasks. The hella tanker is over the wildfire zone. <laughs> Get ready for water extraction. Ranger Diaz. Ah, uh, I was wondering. Lazy Ranger or nice work? Lazy is one uh, is a supercharged word. There's a lot of emotions behind the word lazy, but it's also super common. There's so many words in our in our language that have a lot of emotions behind them being a burden um if someone deserves something like those are, are huge um those are very heavily charged words when it comes to emotions lazy is another one but lazy is probably the most common one it's super common to talk about laziness in even elementary school we usually don't talk about like deservedness or burdens in elementary school and laziness is inherently tied to this idea of like pull yourself up by your bootstraps concept. It's this idea of like, how can we blame an individual for things? And I don't like that because when we do that, we fail to recognize the other systems or the other concepts that are involved with these things. So I am not a fan of the word lazy. So I would much rather say nice work. Nice work, Daniel. Glad to see our training sessions are paying off. Thanks to you. So glad I don't have to touch that water. It's too fucking cold. I imagine. Uh, oops. Sorry. What? I said fucking. Oh, it's fine or watch it? I mean, let's say it's fine. <laughs> it's My perspective on that is like, what's... And, and I don't mean this to like shame, blame, or guilt anybody for how they choose to parent their own kids by any means, right? Like what language we allow our children to say is totally subjective. But in this particular case with this family, I'm kind of looking at it as like, eh, we have seen a lot worse language in my mind. And so it's kind of like, I kind of feel like curse words are like the least of their concerns versus like, first off, racial slurs, not great. Or like, I don't know, trauma and all those other things. I guess like at this point, I would rather care about if Daniel is a jerk than if Daniel says like shit. Like that, that, the, that's my priorities here. Don't be a jerk. Be careful with your powers. And then you can say shit. Like, don't care. Um, and like the grand scheme of things, that's how I'm looking at it. So like, don't, don't be a jerk when you curse, right? But like curse all you want, I guess. Those are my priorities right now. It's fine out here. There's no one to hear you curse. Say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> cool. Will that bite us? I don't know. <sighs> what, what did you find, Shroom? Shroom. Jeez. A burrow. Finding that house was a miracle. Disgust. Hey, it's been a while since we last saw that rabbit who lives in there. Oh. Yeah. I hope it wasn't eaten by a bear, or worse. What's worse than a bear, Inano? I don't know. Wolves? <laughs> don't worry. We're the only wolves around. I was gonna say, aren't they the wolves? <laughs> oh! Uh, Sean? The yeah. family that lived here. What do you think happened to them? Moved out or dead, maybe. Well, shit, let's not say that someone's dead. The last time we pranked them about shit like that, it didn't go well. They must have moved out. Maybe to another state. But they left all their stuff behind? I don't know, man. Maybe they live in Florida and only come here every <laughs> ten years. Maybe they got tired of these woods. Well, I'm glad they left. This is our lair now. I just... I miss my friends and my room. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so they found a house out in like the wilderness, like someone's winter cabin type house with all the stuff in it. And it's like, we're super lucky for this. And, and like, that is an incredible amount of luck. 
I guess when I first think of that, my first thought is like someone's winter house, like um, that they don't have someone caretaking over. So maybe their family only goes there, I don't know, during the winter or they only go there during the winter, right? It's kind of like a second home, an occasional home, that kind of thing. Um, so like, you know, someone who has the amount of privilege and wealth to be able to do that, that's what I think of. To have a second property and not have it be oh, like their primary residence. Almost forgot to check our traps today. Prank. Why would you prank up? Why would you prank? Daniel's getting cold. Yeah. Let's get inside and warm him up. Well, but where did he go? Oh, cool. This way? Oh, there he is. I think they need medical care. Sorry, dog. I'm just, I wanted to look. We really suck at this trap thing. <laughs> I mean, it's also not something that you learn in school, right? What you learn in school, if you learn this stuff in school, is how to like spend your money wisely. When you're at the grocery store where food is already prepared for you, you don't learn in school how to like trap animals or hunt for animals. If you do learn that kind of stuff, it is probably, like, from your family. Like, if you have parents who, like, hunt and, and trap and do that kind of stuff. And some of the stuff, like, budgeting that I mentioned may not even be taught in school. So, like, this isn't... I guess I, the reason why I point that out is because Sean, like, shame, blames, and guilts himself because, like, oh, man, we're awful at this. Well, yeah, because this is not something that you're taught. This is, for me at least, trapping animals is the kind of thing that I would like read in fantasy books but that doesn't mean I actually know how to do it this is not something that is commonly taught and even things that are commonly taught in school I've forgotten over half of it like I suck at math so even things that are commonly taught it is okay if we're not great at just saying Sean it's okay we look at Daniel's not getting any better. We look at shame, blaming, medicine, a real house. and guilting ourselves as though it's going to motivate windows. ourselves. Like, Heating. oh, if I shit on myself enough times, then suddenly I'll be better at trapping. Suddenly I'll just be better at whatever it is I'm not good at. So in my case, if I shame, blame, and guilt myself, I'll suddenly be better at math. And we have a hard time seeing that shame, blaming, guilting ourselves doesn't actually motivate us. Speaking of Daniel, where is he while I was talking about mental health stuff? Daniel! The family who owned that cabin really seemed to enjoy themselves here. Mm, probably, especially if it's a Why second never house. come back? What? <laughs> Do they have railroad things? Like it's the whatever it's called, the holes, the thing <laughs> like... Bullets? Like Rambo, Sean, but like with two heads? What is wrong with my traps? I haven't caught anything. Wildlife do. one, Daniel zero. I guess. We really nailed it with this two headed snow ogre. <laughs> yeah. They're really badass. And Musher isn't even afraid of them anymore. Right, Bobby? Very Calvin and Hobbes type snowman, too. can't really name Birch, right? Probably the name of a child who used to live here. That's what I was thinking, too. Like, whoever made it. I mean, you can name birds. I trained Daniel. Daniel can train Shroom. Huh. It has the thing, like, we can do something with it. Oh, we can play fat. Hey, Inano. Shroom needs some exercise, too. Right? <laughs> Where is he? I expected him to come running over here. Daniel's getting cold. Let's get inside and warm him up. So the game is like, stop messing around outside. I miss outside. Dad's barbecues. His marinade with the aciote paste. Jalapenos. Shit. Yeah, but these barbecues will like survive a lot. All you need is some like charcoal. 
I would be golden. <laughs> Where? What are you doing? Oh, I'm playing with the dog. I like how there are all these tracks in the snow. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we don't take any more guests. Keep out wolves inside. They really lean into that whole idea of being wolves. Oh, I don't think this doghouse is looking too hot. What kind of dog were you, Sandy? A cool stray mutt like our little mushroom? I don't know. Oh, yeah, they have a lot of stuff here for this family. How old are these kids today? Uh, are you getting hungry? Not really. Really? I'm getting hungry. Runaway millennials and part-time forest squatters at your service. I can. You eat like a bear, but you don't gain any weight. Well, he's a kid. He's a kid. Fucking miracle we found this place three weeks ago. So this is kind of like explaining where they've been for the past month. We have to talk about it. Talk about what? Tonight. Talk about what? In theory, haven't you, like, talked about everything? In theory, I would assume that you would have talked about everything about your dad. By now. That was the whole concept. I feel like this month has just flied over us. We're so lucky we found that old cabin. It gave us time to rest and process all that happened. Prody was right. We're stronger now. We look out for each other. We're in this together. Yeah, but it's not over. These woods are so peaceful. So quiet. No planes, no highways. Just the river. Continuously flowing. I, I wish we could stay here longer. But Daniel's health is getting worse every day. And the food is running low. Will we need to move? Again? There feels like, it feels like there's over overarching question of like, where will they live by the time this game ends? Who will they be with? Because yes, they are stronger together, but that doesn't it doesn't mean they couldn't use adults. Um and the medical care by itself, right? Um these seem to be like overarching questions with every episode. I say that as I'm like 1.25, not even, episodes in. Um but this idea of like where we want to live in wilderness is also something that's interesting. It kind of leans into this idea of like how much we know about ourselves. Do we like the peace and quiet? But usually the peace and quiet comes with the drawback of being farther away from society and all the things that society can bring, whether that be Uber Eats or fast food in general or, or just like more options. Those were all examples. They were food related examples, but like I'm hungry. So that's where my brain goes. <laughs> um, but kind of this idea of like, how do we balance that and then find a place that we like, that balance, that has those things, that has the, the right amount of balance that we like. Because there are some people where this type of atmosphere would be perfect for them and they would love that. But for other people, they would hate it, right? Maybe it doesn't have internet. It doesn't have access to a lot of things. So like that wouldn't be great for them. And it doesn't seem great for these characters either. It works because it is something, but not because it's what they want. But then how do we find that for ourselves? And sometimes it takes a while to figure out. It's so silent out here. It's a point. No neighbors. No roads. It's like we're on another planet. <laughs> a new planet. With a captain? That's exactly what we need. Planet? Like that they wipe their feet. Even though, like, 
They could do whatever they want. Isn't that the dream of being a child? When we're, at least, at least for me, right? When I'm an adult, I'll do whatever I want. Nobody can tell me what to do. But despite the fact that, like, there's no adult right now telling them, like, wipe your feet, they still do it anyways. Right? Like, their dad taught them, like, enough, I guess, manners or respect or whatever kind of concept we want to talk about that they still do these things. It's, it's... We could say that potentially it's them respecting their father or maybe it's, like, I know the purpose behind this, so I still do it. Or I see it as my own home, so I do it. They're not living that idea of, I'm going to do what I want, because there's nobody here to tell me Cold. otherwise. Don't worry. We'll make a fire. We're pros now. <coughs> Dude, that cuff doesn't sound too good. Nah, uh, I'm okay. Just cold. You kicked ass today. Level up. <laughs> I did. That was so cool. It's getting easier every day. Oh no, Sean. This is a haunted house. More like, uh-oh. I told you about showing off. I was just... Whatever. Dude, I know the rules. Let's find out. What's the first one? Uh, um. Hide your power. <laughs> if you spin one plate in a diner, what happens? People Rip. will freak out. And when people freak, what do they do? They call the cops. Exactly. The second rule is... Don't, uh... Never talk about it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice, Daniel. Because that's usually the hardest rule for you. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> And the final rule? I know. Come on. Um. You can do it. Okay. Um. Avoid danger? Run from danger. This is the most important one. You know why? Uh. I don't know. I mean, with my power, I can help us. If I'm interpreting this correctly, it sounds like Sean has watched or read a lot of the type of superhero comics or TV shows or movies or whatever um, where people hear or read or whatever about powers and it doesn't go well. Like, there's not good reactions. We can just take a look at X-Men and see a very excellent demonstration of that. So this idea of how can I keep my brother safe, then um, not having how pff, let me back that up this idea of how can i keep my brother safe well keeping the powers under wraps is a start just with general how people react to powers but also this idea of that's how we bring the least amount of attention to us because there's also this idea that in theory the police are still looking for them and if people find out that there are these kids with powers that brings more attention to them meaning the police are more likely to find them too no, it's dangerous or only as a last resort. So basically, do we want to give him permission to use the powers if he has to? That's that's a hard choice. We've already been in a situation where the powers would have been incredibly helpful. Well, shit. They've saved us twice. The gas station situation. I think the brother uses powers there to save us. The thing with the cops in the very beginning. Those are both situations where the brother's powers technically helped us. The brother didn't know that they were powers at the time. Nobody knew what was happening or what was going on at the time. But that was the brother's powers. But then that also begs the question of if the brother uses the powers. At that point, he was using them like against his will, if you want. So if we tell him no, even if he has control over the powers, would they still come out in dangerous situations? Let's say it's dangerous because when we say a last resort, the brother's definition of a last resort may be different from ours. And who knows what that will be. No, it's dangerous. You have to find a different way. So, what's the point of having this power? We don't know yet. Maybe if I... I'd used it before. Dad might still 
be here. But you don't know that. Out of your control, or should shouldn't have left you alone. So one of these options, saying like I shouldn't have left you alone, like that's blame. That that would be Sean blaming himself, like saying like this is my fault. I don't want anybody to blame themselves in this situation. So let's say it was out of your control, because it was right. Like first off, who would expect that they would have powers? And then he did use his powers. He technically did. It's just like it was in reaction to seeing this horrible thing happen with the dad. It wasn't a preventative thing. Daniel, you didn't even know. That shit was out of your control. But look what happened to the policeman. Maybe this power is a curse or something. Hey, we have no clue what happened. And it's not your fault. <coughs> Don't worry, Mushroom. I'm okay. Oh. Good puppy. She must be hungry. What about you? I'm always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> then let's grub out. I'll make us some dinner. <laughs> yeah. Before she eats us. <laughs> I take back what I said about this being like a second home for someone because. I don't see someone who has enough, like, wealth and, and power and privilege to have a second home. Um, having the second home, like, le purposely leaving the second home in, with, like, drywall missing. Granted, that could still happen, right? If they guess, I guess, just, for, like, forgot it existed. Uh, but this is, this is a lot. This feels like a home that did actually just, like, get abandoned. Um, and then, I guess... Mecha robot ready for squatters pickup. came in. Where that squatters? Right. Squatters also feels like a word that has a lot of negative yeah. connotation to it. I don't like it, but shoot, poor doggy's out of water. Oh, we feel it. Hey, shroom, you thirsty? Also, for missing drywall, are we missing insulation? <laughs> Good girl. It's technically a shelter, but like. Danny uh, must have been pissed that day. Don't blame him to scribble that stuff on the picture dad and maggie oh here we go dad and maggie and john agath agath falls summer 93 poor guy i guess kids have to grow up anyway right Hi, Dad. Say hello to your little girl in Miami. Yes, there is a sun here, and it burns. I love it. Tom knows everybody, and I keep waiting to meet Scarface. <laughs> We're at his friend's killer condo with a beach view and a balcony. I feel so spoiled, but I know John is at a castle in the Alps, so I don't feel too bad. Plus, I really like it here. What a great way to start in the new century. I miss our vacation at the Secret Lodge, but I don't miss the raccoons in my room. Hope you can visit soon after the summer. Love you, Maggie. So is this technically the secret lodge? So it still, I guess, could be a second home. I wish I helped Dad more with the house chores back then. That would probably be... There would probably be a huge amount of regrets. Like, I wish I had talked to him more. I wish I had spent more time with him. Wish I had more than tobacco, to be honest. <laughs> like how do we see coping right some ways of coping can be HQ, I'm flying over the <laughs> some ways of coping are considered slightly more healthy than others right like drinking as we see the empty scotch bottle drinking smoking they do technically help us cope right they do technically help us feel better but are they healthy ways of coping no like not really <laughs> um I look at healthy versus unhealthy, like, ways of coping. And, yes, this is totally, like, a black and white way of looking at it. I realize that. But I look at healthy versus unhealthy ways of coping as in, like, does it help you – does it hurt you or other people now or in the future, right? Smoking kind of hurts us and potentially other people now and in the future. Drinking, the same thing, right? And so I kind of look at it. Danger in sight. Copy? There was a little bit left when we came. Ugh. So Pretty disgusting, but – 
like first up plain scotch also just like huh. um so we're learning that sean now that the the i guess for lack of a better word not the burden of like telling his brothers off his shoulders he doesn't have to be like the strong one anymore now that that is off of him he is coping in ways that aren't the healthiest right he's trying to smoke he's trying to drink like as much as he can within like the confines of this house or while staying within this house and it's not just that like there's a desire for more of it right he's sitting there going i wish i could drink more i wish i could smoke more i wish i had more than just these things which is like not great that desire to cope in unhealthy ways even more and to be fair we can have that desire but then like not do it like the the thoughts and the desires are different than the actions but in this case i wonder if they would no, be different warm. Yeah, but, like, that's not what the alcohol was for. Like, realistically. I hate it when I hear Daniel crying at night. Mm. I can't do shit. No. I mean, not in a way that, like, you can solve the problem, but you can, like, listen. Which is huge, and we do not... We don't recognize how valuable that is. Kind of weird to use stranger stuff every day, but... Not like we have a choice. Especially the best dad ever. We scored with these clothes. Oh, that's Plus what they got five the clothes. street cred. He's definitely a fast learner. Maybe too fast. I mean, I don't know. November 10, first lesson. November 17, flying bottle. November, November 21, twigs and leaves. 25th, small rocks. December 1st, big rock. Snowballs. I mean, there's a certain point where, like, what do you escalate it to, though, right? We're so lucky this thing is still working. Wouldn't have lasted long without heat. Mushrooms cushion. Mushroom clung to Daniel on the first nights. But now she loves her bed by the fire. Yeah, it's the fire, right? Thank God kids used to spend vacations here. Daniel would have been mad without these. Something for him to do. High school feels so far away now. I like how many pine cones there are in our inventory. Oh. All the drawings. Holy shit, crazy racist played sheriff and trapped me in this shithole. Daniel saved my ass. Kid is brave as AF. What the fuck happened after Earthquake? So that was Daniel's power. Bumped into Weirdo while running away. He saved us. He's awesome. And the drawings of the bear. We've seen some of this. Feeling safe for the first time since Seattle, thanks to Brody. Also picked an odd mushroom on our way out. Probably a bad idea, but whatever makes Daniel smile again. I still have to tell him. At least now, I know where we're off to. Puerto Lobos. Brody got us a room. He's a boss. He even left us some cash. Sure hope we meet again one day. Chilling a bit. Ben ages. Real beds. Almost too comfy to be true. Oh, the drawing of Daniel and Mushroom. Sorry. Oh, Lila. Didn't call Lila too dangerous. Might get her in trouble. No phone went out for a midnight swim. Safer that way. Off the radar. What the actual fuck is happening to Daniel? What is he? When did that start? Same thing in Seattle? Fuck, what do I do? November 1st. So this... We didn't read the journal after all of this. Oh. I got off where I was. But, like, a lot of this is, is new. On the road again. Gotta find ourselves a hideout then. Puertos... Or Puerto Lobos. Need money and supplies before we head to Puerto Lobos. We'll hide somewhere until we find out what WTF is up with Daniel. No fucking idea how we'll handle this. Tired. Try to sleep now. Warm here. We're getting off at the next station. Wherever it is. Very best. Taking you where you want to be. Where? November 2nd. Charity thrift store in some town southeast of Albany. Albany? Found layers for Daniel and me. Harry was cool. Slept in someone's backyard shed. Would not recommend. It itches. Oh, the sock. 
November 3rd, sleeping in a shelter. Fake names. They didn't seem to give a fuck. Probably not. No one seems to give a fuck here. They even let mushroom in. Invisible. Mm. November 4th, leaving town. Crackhead. That's lovely. At the shelter, almost snatched our stuff last night. Daniel freaked out and lights flickered. Can't risk another incident. Okay. So, if he's aware of the powers, they are coming out more. Or, that could have been just as, like, anxiety-inducing to have that happen. Heading out for to the or for the forest again too dangerous to have him around people for now i'm so tired so starting to see his brother is the thing to be afraid of hitchhiked along highway 20 geologist on her way to mount jefferson picked this up not big on talking but enough so like she made enough of an impression that there's a detailed drawing turtle told her we were on a survivalist trip hello mayo most accurate lie i've ever told Mice Palace. OMG, we found a house. A real fucking house. Looks like an abandoned cabin. No one has been here for years. We just, or er, was just here waiting for us. Hansel and Gretel style. They talked about the cabin as though it was, like, fully furnished. And, like, completely ready to be moved in. But, like, that is not how I see it. There is technically a mattress and there is technically furniture. But it is, like, it is, like, not the same. It's not the same. This is, like, completely abandoned. Just because it technically has furniture does not mean that it's the same. Settled in. Had to leave Daniel to look for food. He hates me. I hate myself, too, for leaving him alone. Whoa, why are you saying that he hates you? Previous town, about a mile away. Hope I don't get lost. Number eighth. Nearest town is 15 miles away across the forest. Wow. No way I can commute there every day. That's a lot. Managed to steal canned food from a couple stores. Found the rest in the garbage. Getting good at this, but not proud. That's not usually something we... Considering, like, that's not... That's not how he was raised. I imagine that that would be something that he would be conflicted about. It's like, yeah, I'm getting good at this, but, like, yay. <sighs> Think we can last two weeks on these. We'll need to stock up again after. Found my way back. Daniel's okay. Okay, so Daniel was left alone for... November 8th. For like one day. On my way back, Daniel okay, but he broke some stuff around the house trying to use his powers. We'll try to help him control it. Practice starts tomorrow. Okay, so that's why there's such a huge pressure about like trying to help him control the powers. Like there have been more and more incidents of him either using it on his own or just like having it show up in general. Focus it. Weight, size. There's something torn out. What's torn out? November 26th, ship captain crew. No crew without a captain, no captain without a crew. Ship captain crew. When the when the ship, the captain, and the crew are complete, only then you can use the last dice to score some loot. Play with the highest loot over 20 wins the game. Hoy. So making up a game with dice? Um, he did it with the bottles. Sean and Daniel with the dice. Back to town today. Walked slower with the snow. Scavenged in the trash. Found tons of good shit or stuff. How can people waste so much? So trying himself as a raccoon. November 25th. 25th. Daniel's sick. Tired and coughing. Will go easy on the outside training until he feels better. Might need to go back in town soon for some medicine. 30 mile walk in the snow. Yeah, but like, he needs to be diagnosed first. Oh, Daniel drawing himself. How can this kid every time at the... How can he beat the... Or how can this kid ev win every time at the dice game? Cheating? I mean, he could technically be using his powers. So have we gone up to northern Washington? I can't tell where we're at now. No, Eugene. So, okay, so no, we're in the we're in the red section of Oregon. That's where we are. Okay, that makes more sense. Oh, here are the things that we can put in her backpack. And the ones that we can find in this section. Okay. So glad we trade my stupid blanket for this. It's like a really old 
spindle thing. Yo, go puppy. Oh, you can pet the puppy. Oh, so now you let me pet you, huh? Oh, it's a good game. <laughs> Give and take. I get it. It's a good game. You can pet the puppy. Feels almost good to be cut off from everything. I can see that, especially if we see everything that we're being cut off from as like potentially terrible or awful or have all those <sighs> connotations or associations. Yep. No more indoor training sessions. Oh. There's so much in this house. Hello, motel room soap. So he did take it. They took the soap from the hotel. Motel. No way I can give any of these to Daniel. Oh, too risky. Why? I mean, from what I understand of uh, medicine expiration dates is that most of them are kind of arbitrary or like the effectiveness declines over time. And the only reason that we know this, again, this is just my understanding, is because the military decided to test these things because the military wanted to know like how, how long they could send their soldiers with medicine. So, most medicine, their effectiveness is still pretty good. However, it could be that he doesn't want to give Daniel this stuff because, like, if I don't know what the cough is from, I don't want to give him the wrong stuff, which is totally fair. Again, it kind of goes back to my idea of, like, he has to be diagnosed first, right? Pro tip, always boil the water. Unless you want Daniel spraying nasty things on both ends. Ugh. So, I mean, Sean uh, shits on himself. Like, you know, shames, blames, and guilts himself because, like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about trapping. I don't know anything about this other stuff. But, like, he is either figuring this stuff out or already knows it. So, for example, even when that happened to Daniel, he knew the solution for it. So, he doesn't give himself credit for what he is doing, is what I'm saying. Why... Once you get used to squatting, it's not so bad. Oh, I guess like I saw the toilet and I was like, why do you have a bucket? It doesn't make sense. And then it's like, of course, there's no like indoor plumbing. Like <laughs> you need power for that. I wonder how far it can go. And water, power and water. Those things go hand in hand. Essentially, if you have a house with none of these things, the yeah, toilet wouldn't work. I guess that kind of shows how much I take that stuff for granted. This is rank. Oh, sharing with Daniel was the worst. Well, I, I mean, we could take it that way, yeah. No more peeing at night for Daniel. He got so scared. We're lucky he didn't blow up the house. So, like, more, we're seeing, like, more and more examples of how the powers are showing. And it isn't always great. At least we have fresh water in our front yard. True. Hey, I put some clean water in the bathroom so you can wash a little. Um, it feels weird to loot other people's clothes, but we need the warmth. I mean, I can see that, especially because it's not like a thrift store where like, people have necessarily given permission. But at the same time, if they, if this family hasn't been using the clothes for... We really lucked out stumbling into this house. ...years, then at what point do we consider it acceptable to kind of take the clothes? <sighs> this room is fucking cold, so mm. we put everything we didn't need in it and keep it closed. Yeah. And the boobies all curled up on the bed. This thing is strong as a rock. Mm. Well, it's probably why we were given that backpack. So we have $9 left. Oh, and we have a pocket knife. We're supposed to be building a fire in the wood stove. That's... I totally remembered that. I was too busy looking at things. Gotta love one-hit wonders. 
I don't know what One Hit Wonder that would be referencing, but it makes me, the poster t- style reminds me, like, very 90s, like, Backstreet Boys or whatever other band Justin Timberlake was in. Justin Timberlake wasn't in Backstreet Boys, but whatever other band it was. Daniel's been sick for more than a week. I know, I know. I have. And it keeps getting worse. I have to look at stuff first, though. I obviously have my priorities. This thing has saved our ass. I bet. It Once might run out of to get warm. fuel, though. I mean, it would at some point, I suppose. Yeah. Daniel doesn't need to see this. Dear Mr. Patrick Hill, this is a ri- this is a reminder for your scheduled chemotherapy appointment at the Hope Patient Center. This is to- from 2003. The game is set in 2016. Please read the enclosed instructions to prepare for your visit. Okay, so the game is basically saying that whoever lived here before died of cancer. So it's like, I need to hide this from Daniel so he doesn't know that the people who lived here before actually died. No excuse not to binge read. <laughs> of course. He's the town fucking hero now. Are you kidding? I suppose, since we are gone, the only person who would be there to tell the story would be this guy and his wife. So, of course, they could tell whatever story they want to tell, right? So, like, this guy could tell the story about how terrible we were and awful we were and how we attacked him, right? Like, basically, he could create whatever narrative he wanted, right? Like, that's a factor in this. And at that point, he could probably lie, like, like actively lie and just make up whatever story he wanted, right? That's an element, if we are talking about, so this is like the person who, who like attacked us, right? There's also this element of it that if someone is that bigoted, would they honestly see it that way? As in like, would they see it, would they see the things that they're telling people as not lies? We can't know this for sure, but this kind of goes back to the city of like perception and how we justify things to ourselves. <sighs> Local hero attacked by fugitives in store invasion, right? So, like, we invaded the store instead of him pulling us in there. There's a slight element of this that I feel like is also a caveat, too, of, like, could some of this be, like, uh, the media? Like, yellow journalism, right? The, the media blowing this out of proportion to get sales for their, their newspapers, potentially. Police are investigating a store invasion by the two Seattle runaways believed to be responsible for the death of a Seattle police officer in October. Hank Stamper, owner of a gas station off Highway 5 and a pillar of the community. I can't help but have a sarcastic tone. Like, come on. (laughs) Said he confronted the two brothers, Sean and Daniel Diaz, after they allegedly stole items from his store. Stamper told the police that the brothers escaped into the woods. Yeah, I was scared. You know how crazy kids can be these days. How can I feel bad for him? This whole newspaper is like built to make these kids feel awful. Awful. Because the first one is like, here's how you were awful to the store owner. And then the second one is like, here's about the police officer that was killed. Right? And like, the first incident thing. Because of how awful that person was, it makes it feel more justified. Like, you're kind of an asshole. This one is like... (sighs) When we're talking about things like pulling a gun on kids who they don't have, they don't have guns themselves. They weren't doing anything wrong. We can say that that is a lack of training within the system itself. Like it's a it's a systemic issue that we could say, right? Like, um, like was the police officer not trained themselves? Um, was there, um, like, if we're talking about like the racial element with that, we could say like that it at least at least it wasn't as open as like someone literally saying racial slurs, right? And like openly justifying and openly saying no one will believe you, right? It, it just that one feels like. It has less intent behind it. And it doesn't mean that it's right or justified by any means, but it doesn't feel like, at least from what we saw, it's easier to say that it's a systemic issue than, like, that one particular person is an asshole. Right? Because it's easier to say, um, like, the police officers need more training. Or even, like, 
should have been the police officer in the first place um you know versus like you know social workers or other things like that right and that's a systemic issue it's not like that one particular person having that problem from what we saw right granted there are other instances in real life again this is so relevant which is sad but in real life that may not be the case and i want to recognize that um but I think that's the difference, too, between these two stories, right? Like, we have one story about a guy who was just, like, openly a jerk. And the second person, it wasn't as open. Jerk aspects, not as open. <sighs> Ashley Math, or family recalls gentle, in quotes, gentle officer killed in Seattle shooting. Ashley Matthews, sister of Officer Kindred Matthews, killed in a mysterious and controversial Seattle incident that left two dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody's talking about the dad. Or hardly anybody. There was that news article thing. Not an article, but like there was a news thing talking about the Daniel. That's how Daniel found out. But hardly anyone is talking about that. Could what like what do we say about that too? Right? <sighs> Has released a statement regarding the threats she received and online critics of the officer. Oh, so, like, people are cri cr criticizing the officers. Okay. My brother was a kind man. He was in the force for only six months ugh, and shouldn't have been alone that day. So, no matter what, there are people saying this is a systemic issue. My heart is with the Diaz family. Oh, and all the victims of that terrible accident, including us. The police department needs better funding, so no officer goes on patrol alone if their partner is sick or unavailable. Kindred dedicated his life to helping others, especially children in at-risk homes, and he always volunteered his time to charity. It's easy for people to judge and attack behind a keyboard. True. But just as we mourn for others, we mourn for the loss of a brave public servant. There's so many layers to this, right? Like, when do we say it's a public... Not a public. When do we say it's a systemic issue versus not? I guess what I like about this quote um, is that they're still saying it's a systemic issue. Because so many of these things wonder are. wonder where Brody is now. Oh. Oh, yeah. No internet. Yeah. Okay, so this is Brody's letter that we've read before. I'm used to ink, so... This will be different. So he found colored pencils. I have time to learn now. Not quite used to it. Dead for a week. <laughs> but at least we got some news. Cold case 22. Kind of reminds me of Dad's cheesy posters. Back to action. I don't know what you would say. You know, something like that. It reminds me of like 80s movies. Thanks, Hank. Dickhead. That's how he chooses to play. That's a, that's using the powers a lot. Daniel's cold is getting worse. I know, I know. Okay, I'll... a serious fire in here. I'll listen. Oh, we're probably burning the magazines. Mushroom, we're gonna build a fire. Dang, I am starving. Guess it's time to start cooking. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you were starving. Too bad I can't make a pizza fly to us. I thought you were Daniel. I could start Daniel's delivery service. You could, but that kind of goes against literally all the rules. He looks so serious on this picture. I still can't believe he's gone. I miss him so much, it hurts, Sean. I know, Daniel. It's okay to think about him. I do it too. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Sean doesn't recognize, like, how important it is to be there to hear his brother 
for those things. It's like, because I can't solve the problem, I'm, I'm useless, I'm meaningless, I don't do anything for my brother. When we have conversations with people, we often assume that people talk to us because they want a problem solved. So our default is trying to offer a solution. And sure, sometimes it's great. Don't get me wrong, if I'm talking to someone and they have a solution, I would love that. But a great deal of the time, there just aren't solutions for these things. Loss, for example, or the asshole, Hank, whatever his name was. Like, they're, they're just, there aren't always solutions for these things. And if there's not a solution, having support is, the, I, I guess my brain goes to the next best thing, but we are built for connection. Connection is so important and it's not always about if there is a solution. Feeling that we are heard, feeling that we are validated is so important. This is what leads us to feel like we are connected with other human beings, that we have a sense of community and support, all of those things. And connection is something that we feel when it is not there, but we have a hard time understanding when it is there, the importance of it. These were all I found when I hit the town last week. Mmm. Tough choice. Tin can one, two, three, or four? Let's go with four. Or is that one? Better talk to Daniel after dinner. Daniel, what are you cooking? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Here's your menu choices. Ravioli or ravioli? This sucks. Why couldn't you find us better food? He tried! Don't get me wrong. You can be frustrated about that. But like, maybe we can say that this sucks and just like end it there because we can all agree that this sucks. Granny's a kid. I think I could get used to living like this. Quiet. <laughs> so tired of eating the same shit. <laughs> I like how Sean goes from, I could get used to this, to like, I'm so fucking tired of this shit. <laughs> I just want one slice of pizza. Um, okay, how do I... I'm so tired of eating the same shit. Okay, I feel a bit silly. I just want one slice of pizza. <laughs> I feel that silly sitting here totally looks like mushrooms. saying, how do I open up the can? <coughs> This house is cool, but it doesn't help with Daniel's health. I know. I'm. Do I need the mug? How you doing, Mushroom? Don't need the mug. You're the best puppy in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use the same bowl I'm as the dog. Glad we found you. As badass as it would be, there's no way we'll heat our food without a pan. Now you tell me. How you doing, Mushroom? Dude, you'll be moving cars around in no time if you keep improving like that. Mm, really think so? Well, that'd be a bad idea, but you sure are getting good at this. Wonder if there's anyone else like me. Mm, I think we'd know it by now. Oh, the pan is probably in the bathroom with all the rest of the dishes. Daniel needs to eat something after all that. Well, also like crap. in general, eating something's probably a good idea. I see you standing there. Oh, the puppy. So cute. Teach. Ready for today's training, puppy? <laughs> sit. <clears throat> Shroom, sit. Seriously, girl. Sit. Mushroom, sit, girl. 
Oh, Mushroom only listens to Daniel. You just don't know how to talk to her. I'll remember this, <laughs> traitor. Daniel will remember this. <laughs> Puppy is so stinking cute. Nah, it's not ready yet. Okay. I'm a ravioli expert now. I bet. Excuse me, Daniel. Maybe I can draw a quick sketch outside while the food is heating. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Puppy. Nothing bad better happen to that dog. Serious. Keep an eye on that dog. Okay, got it. You don't, you don't want to sketch anymore? Oh. I was like, where's the prompt? I need to observe more before I can actually draw. Okay. I've looked enough. Time to draw now. Where's the dog? Sean? Oh, pretty good. But I can add more details if I want. Of course. Cool. I think I'm ready to draw this. <gasps> it's so pretty. Adding more details better not come to bite me in the Time ass. Time to take the pen, dude. Like, you can just see the puppy go in and out. Just like, look at me, look at me! <laughs> come on, dog. Come on, girl. Let's get back in. Oh, good. I was afraid something would happen to the dog. Ooh. <sighs> okay, dinner's ready. This looks ominous. This is like the opening of Until Dawn. Getting sick of ravioli. <sighs> Spaghetti and truffles are better than nothing. I mean, like, what do you what do you say to this? They're both sick of it. There's not really much choice. It's fair to not like it. I don't want to, like, dismiss that. <sighs> it's... Yeah. I mean, it's not either one of them... It's not... Neither one of them caused it, though. Like, when I think of blame, I think, like, oh, you caused this. But that's not the case. Better than nothing? This is real food. It's better than nothing. I'm just tired of the same thing. Do you want it, Mushroom? Oh, come on. Or Bon Appetit, Mushroom. I mean... I think that the more that Daniel talks about the food thing, the more he isn't blaming his brother, even though it may sound that way. It sounds more like just frustration at the situation. So, you know, I guess if he wants to feed it to the dog, he can. He may regret it later, but, like, I don't think there's anything we do about it at that point. <laughs> bon appetit, Mushroom. Man, she loves this stuff. <coughs> 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 Sorry. I'm cool. Hold on. I need to show you something. Um, okay. What are we showing him? Gotta show him the map. I think 
I left it with my books. Mm. Nothing here. Okay. Daniel, what did you do with the map? Mm. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Where's the map that was with my stuff? I don't know. I'm not keeping track of your things. Feels like they're having some tension. Isn't the map in the backpack, though? That's where we looked at it. Heard. There's very little things we can look at right now. Damn, kid. Where did he put it? I don't know. It feels like we're just walking around to waste time until something happens in the game. Because there's so few things we can click on. Oh, are we looking in his lair? Oh, no, Bobby. I mean, it doesn't look like it'd be with the doll. Okay, come on, doggy. Let's go, girl. Hey, man. Can you call your dog? I don't exist. Mushroom, come here, girl. <laughs> what a great team. So wait, 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 the map is there, literally underneath his lair. At the end of the last chapter, Daniel's like, promise me, promise me you won't lie to me again. And we promised, right? But now he's lying to us. That doesn't, like, that's a double standard, right? Don't get me wrong, that double standard exists all the time with parents, right? Like, the ideal is that there's somewhat of like the least amount of lying possible from a parent to a kid i say some the least amount of lying possible because like i think that there's some amount of lying by omission that happens when we talk to kids because it's like keeping things age appropriate i think is that basic concept but kids lie to their parents <laughs> like that that's part of growing up although we don't want kids to lie to parents but it happens the ideal is that it doesn't happen. Having said all of that, this isn't actually parents to kids. This is like siblings. So like that doesn't happen here. Like that that same kind of concept of like, oh, it's normal doesn't work. It's not the same. <laughs> so why is it that we are not allowed to lie to him anymore, but he can't lie to us? That feels weird. And like the way that he phrased it was... Like, you're, like, it was because of, Sean lied to his brother because, like, you're supposed to, like, Sean, Sean lied to his brother because it's like, I'm protecting you, right? That kind of justification to protect his brother. Why is Daniel lying, though? Time to play dad, dog. <laughs> So I just said that that relationship isn't there, but, like, it obviously... that He's still playing that role. But again, like, ugh. Hmm. I could do a super cool manga about Daniel. But again, like, they're, that's not actually the role that they have. <sighs> Sean's just been placed in that role. Does that also mean that Daniel ripped out those pages that I commented on? No way I'm touching that. Who? <laughs> Man, I miss listening to music so fucking much. It's like, um, Toy Story. <laughs> Daniel loves his brand new tablet. Oh, sad. Sean, there's someone at the door. What, what the, the When did he show up? I don't know. I just saw him now. Which door? Sean. I'm scared. Uh, don't worry, Nano. It's it's probably just someone lost. I was like genuinely like, huh. 
that's Daniel. Daniel realized that he's in deep shit because he hid something, lied to his brother about it, and has been found out. Daniel realizes that he's in deep shit, like I imagine a great deal of us have with our parents at one point or another, where we realize that we've been caught in trouble. The difference is, Daniel is a child with powers. So, like, the rest of us didn't have that. The rest of us get in trouble with our parents, and we have to sit with that uncomfortable feeling and watch like a car accident. Just, like, watch the trouble coming our way and knowing that there's nothing we can do about it. But not Daniel. Daniel has an out with his powers. We've seen Daniel playing with his powers in in very like mundane ways the entire day, right? He plays with his toys with his powers, right? When he's scared, what does he do, right? Like that fear reaction comes out. His powers come out in a variety of ways. Some of them mundane and some of them not so mundane. Daniel's realized he's in fucking trouble. So what does Daniel do? Daniel takes a sheet with his powers from outside. It's a glass window. He can see outside. He takes a sheet or whatever with his powers. There were things lying around outside that could be that. And he makes it look like a ghost. It's not a person. That's Daniel. Daniel is panicking because he realizes he's in trouble and has to have a difficult conversation with his brother. And Daniel can show his anxiety and panic in different ways than the rest of us can. And that's what this is. I think. Can we help you? There's no legs. Hello? And like people don't go around with a sheet over their head. What do you want? Mother f Daniel? Yep. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> it's a distraction. Out of your mind or okay, good job. Yeah. Okay. okay good job. Should have said out of your mind. That was actually my thing. I just wanted to hit <laughs> a button. Shit your pants. Of course I did, man. Oh. Anyway. This is gonna be a conversation. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, place map. I was just walking around the table like, you're in trouble, mister. I'm just gonna pace in front of you. <laughs> Okay, I think it's time for us to hit the road. Wait, what? You're not getting better. I am shocked there wasn't a little more of a conversation about the map and why Daniel lied about it. It could still happen, don't get me wrong. But maybe he doesn't want to call him on it. Almost like his dad did. Right, his dad? was his dad was awful at the discipline too and if his dad is awful at the discipline maybe he has a hard time like doing that with daniel too we're almost out of supplies no i'm okay <clears throat> it's just a cough yeah a bad cough that won't go away Trust me, Daniel. You need some medicine. Look. Here. Beaver Creek? What's that? That's where Karen's parents... Our grandparents live. Okay. Beaver Creek is also Captain... Captain Spirit. That's where that was. I remember that postcard where the kid was like, I have never seen beavers here. And it's where he called his mom by her first name, but that's where their grandparents are. So what? So we can go there and they'll probably help us. Why do you always force us to run, Sean? Well, what if they don't like me? But he cares about his brother, right? Like, it's not about forcing like forcing them to run it's about like i care about my brother and my brother is sick and obviously needs help their family or no other options i mean there are no other options at this point i mean there are but like they're not great options no other options don't think that way it's not like we have tons of options. Okay. 
I'm just scared they're gonna think I'm a freak or something. Man, they're gonna love you. Grandpa's super cool, and I'm sure you guys will be best buds. Well, okay. But Mushroom has to agree, too. She's part of the team. What do you say, girl? <laughs> Okay, when? Tomorrow. The sooner the better. We have a long road ahead. Hmm. We should do something fun for our last night here. How about a game of dice? <sighs> if I win, I get to draw on your backpack. You know I'm gonna win and draw a dick on your bag, right? <laughs> I don't think so, pussy. Okay, like when Party I time. when I said that like the language was okay. That wasn't quite what I meant. Not quite what I meant. So what I'm gathering about the grandparents, though, is that Sean has met them. And then potentially, like, when whatever happened with the mom, like, whenever that was, it happened early enough that Daniel doesn't have a relationship with the grandparents, never met them, doesn't remember them. Because he doesn't know how they will react to him. And, and some of that sounds like the powers aspect, but also just, like, in general. And it could be a very real thing that, like, suddenly kids show up in your doorstep that you don't know, like, who they are, potentially. But also, the powers thing, the dog thing for some people, that's a thing. But also, like, they're fugitives from the police. Like, all of these could be aspects that would make someone say, I'm not going to take you in. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to help in other ways, too. Okay. Ready to lose, Captain. They might have What's wanted but maybe they might have wanted a close relationship with them for a while but haven't been able to. Oh. Okay. Just, no. Wrong button. Here we go. Just need a 6, a 5, and a 4. I think. Oh, come on. I need a ship. <laughs> Too bad. I think that Daniel might be using his powers here. But Daniel's powers are also sort of obvious that we know of. Okay. Give me a six. There's also a certain amount of... Still incomplete? Jeez. Sounds like a no score. There's also a certain amount of this that is... You can only roll, roll dice so many times before it's... And if you get none of these rolls before it's, like, not coincidence, right? I don't Got know. a ship now. Captain. Sure. Yeah, Captain. <laughs> Ahoy, Captain. And I have one more throw to get a, a four. This is my last chance. Don't fail me. Yes. Oh. Okay. Full ship and cargo. What are you going to do? You just lucked out. High score. I have no idea what I'm doing. <sighs> Better than nothing. Oh, I'm a sucky pirate. Okay. <laughs> All right, your turn. Ooh, you see this? Perfect throw. Yeah, yeah. Good job. I need the score now. Pretty please. <sighs> Lame. Oh, that's a nice score. <sighs> I'm so scared. Ah, oh, pretty good. Okay, let me throw now. Okay. Can I get something better this time? Okay. Got his... What the hell? That changed right in front of us. He is using his powers. Call Daniel out or stop playing. I'm gonna call him out. You kidding me? I can see the dice rolling, dude. What did I do? Really? You're just finding excuses. Stop cheating, man. 
You gotta be better than this. Especially now. Whatever. So he won't admit it. Like... It makes me wonder if he is sitting here going... Like... It, it feels like there's not humility with it, I guess. Almost like... Seeing himself as being... Not better than other people, but almost like... Testing how far he can go with it. Even though it's with other people. And not saying that these things have ramifications. Which, oddly enough, fits into the theme of the game. Or not the theme of the game, but like, the concept of choice-based games very well. You know, he, he tricked his brother that it was a person, which like, could potentially have big ramifications. Every time he plays a game with his brother, he's using his powers. Uh, again, these are interactions with other people. It reminds me a lot of um, how kids interact. And to be fair, not every kid is like this, but kids usually are very, for lack of a, of a better word, selfish. Because kids have a hard time um, just developmentally with how their brain is. Kids have a hard time seeing past themselves. Kids have a hard time seeing that their actions impact other people. And, you know... They, when, so when kids play, it's a lot of, oh, that's my toy. Kids are just often very selfish. Um, so it's a lot of trying to realize that our actions do impact others. And Daniel is kind of like Daniel's past the age like we're I feel like that usually happens. I don't know off the top of my head, like what age developmentally like we start to see past ourselves. I usually think of this with kids who are like, you know, five, six, that kind of thing. Um, so like it, developmentally, he's past that. But at the same time, he has just been giving something cool that other people don't have. So I think there probably is a certain amount of testing to see what we can and can't do. But he's he's definitely testing it in a way that impacts others. And he doesn't see it that way. It's just more like, what, what about me? There's also part of me that wonders how much Sean is jealous, potentially, right? Like... Is Sean jealous that he's that his brother's the only one with powers? We haven't really seen that a lot, but I do feel like that's kind of a common trope. So is that something that we'll see? I don't know. Sean seems to be kind of content with just taking care of his brother. Um, well, not really just taking care of his brother, but that's kind of the role that he's adapting, right? Like, I'm going to take care of my brother. I'm going to be the coach, right? He doesn't talk about it like, I wish I had that too. Yeah, I'm going to stop playing, right? And this is like, not playing is something that often helps us see that our actions have consequences. It is this idea that people won't want to play with me. I'm not going to have friends. Have find these dice. If, I if I know. keep making selfish choices. Probably read all these books. Uh, okay. I've had enough. I give up. What? For real? Yep. You heard me. Yeah, okay. You want it. Here's my bag. Mmm. Let's see. Because okay. let's let's be real. Daniel could draw anything on the backpack whenever he wanted. A poop. Really? Yeah. It suits you. Wow. Well, thank you very much. It's bedtime. Gotta get up early. I'm gonna finish my comic book. She has to pee. Okay, okay. I'll take her out for a walk. You're going to smoke. It smells like ass. You're right. Don't smoke. <laughs> but it's our last night, so... Do as I say and not as I do. It's also one of those things where if Daniel wasn't sick, it would be easy to say, if it's your dog, then, like, you take her out, especially if you don't want me to smoke. Um, but since he's sick, it's really hard to say that. We can do anything. All right, all right. I heard you the first time, dude. Close the door. Again, if your brother is sick. <laughs>
Is that an orange cigarette? I don't think I've ever seen an orange cigarette. Would be very quiet and also very loud with nighttime like woody sounds try to see if he has powers what I was just saying about jealousy right so he is jealous he does kind of wish that he has the powers too how do we try if we're not jealous welcome back to life is strange too These episodes are so long, chapters, whatever you want to call them, are so long that there isn't always a, a good natural break for where to stop my own videos. This feels like a good place, and I say that because I don't quite know what's coming up or where a good natural break would be. So within this section of the video, we have seen a little glimpse into how these characters have been living for the past life. Daniel has been practicing his powers to the point where it is mundane, but like it shouldn't be mundane, right? Sean has been really reinforcing these rules with the idea of safety in mind. So, you know, keep it secret, keep it safe, that kind of thing. And it does not feel like these two characters on this are on the same page with that. It feels like Daniel just wants to like do whatever he wants with it. Or, I mean, just like be a kid as kids do. He wants to, maybe not flaunt it, but he wants to play with it. He wants to show it off. He wants to use it for his own amusement. But that goes against every rule that Sean was talking about. And I think that that is definitely going to be a thing. There's an element of secrecy between the brothers. And that's very similar, but yet very different from what we saw in the previous episode, Chapter Shindig. Because in the previous section... Sean was hiding something from Daniel. Um, and there is like a, a, a purpose that feels normal in our society, as in it is normal for parents, and this is the role that Sean is filling, even though he he like shouldn't be. Um, there's that parentified thing that keeps coming back. Um, this idea that like I'm protecting you, that kind of like lying by omission, right? That's very normalized in our society when it comes to, like, parents and kids. But there's also a, a different element in the sense that, like, we were playing Sean, so we knew what the lie was. That's not the case with Daniel. And I'm saying this also not knowing if this will actually be a theme or if this is kind of a one-off thing. We'll have to see. But it does mean that, that you know, there, there's a, there are these different elements to this relationship than what was true in the previous chapter. The right? previous chapter was a bit of like blissful ignorance as far as like from, from Daniel to Sean. I don't think that's the same now. We'll have to see how things play out. Plus the fact that Daniel is sick. Like, I think he needs to be seen by a doctor. They're going to go to their grandparents. It sounds like on the mom's side. And there's very little information that we have about the mom. Like... Her stuff was packed up. He talks about her mom by her first name. And that's unusual for kids. Kids don't usually talk about their parents that way. So that implies that like, something happened there. So having said all of that, 
I, I'm gonna stop here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the video, the game, and I'll see you next time.